Hi and welcome to MockCat. In today's video, we are talking about what I would feel is the second most important exam after CAT and that's ZAT. That. Uh, there's not just XLRI, XIMB and so on which take the ZAT score. There's a whole bunch of B schools which accept the ZAT score. Many of them will take the best of CAT and ZAT. So let's get right into it and understand. Now there's been a slight change in this year's exam. Last year we had 165 minutes which is 2 hours and 45 minutes for the core test from which we get the ZAT percentile and another 25 minutes for GK and the essay. This year what we have is 175 minutes so that's 2 hours and 55 minutes in which we'll be solving 75 questions uh, split across DARC decision making and the quant and DI section. There will be a 5 minute keyboard testing after this and then we will be having 30 minutes where we will have to solve 25 GK questions and we will have to write the essay. So all of these questions, the 75 questions which is 26 VARC questions, 21 decision making questions and 28 quant and DI questions as well as the 25 GK questions are all MCQs with 5 options. And the scoring pattern is a plus 1 and minus 0.25. So for every correct question, you're going to get 1 mark. Every incorrect question, you're going to get minus 0.25. Remember that if you've punched in an option and then you're going for mark for review, even that is considered the same as CAT and every other exam. But there's one unique thing which is there in ZAT, which is that if you are not attempting more than 8 questions, you're going to get a minus 0.1. So for example, out of the 75 questions, if you've solved only 65 questions, so that's 10 questions that you've left unattempted. So 10 minus 8 for 2 questions, you're going to get minus 0.1. So a total of minus 0.2. If you're solving only, uh, let's say 50 questions, so then you have 25 questions left. So 25 minus 8, 17 questions. So you're going to get minus 1.7. So this is one thing which is unique for ZAT. Uh, the benefit that we get in ZAT is there's no sectional timer. While there are sectional cutoffs, there's no sectional timer which is there. So you can actually use that to formulate your, you know, the time that you're going to take, how you split the 2 hours and 55 minutes and I'll give you a couple of options for that as well. Now the second section which is there, which is the GK and the SA, again there have been some changes in that in this year. First of all, we're getting 30 minutes out of which maybe 10 or a max of 15 minutes should be sufficient for the 25 GK questions. Now the scoring pattern in GK is a plus one for correct answers but no negative marking. So you should definitely attempt all the questions. Uh, just maybe just put BBB or CCC whatever choose some one option and stick with it for all your unattempted questions so that at least some of them will be correct. For the essay, the change is this time we have to write up to 300 words and we'll have three options. Last year we had two options. This time we are going to have three options and we need to choose from there. So we do have a separate video which is all about the essay. I do recommend that after this video you watch that uh, because I'll be telling you about you know some potential topics which come up, how I approach the essay and how you can, what is the format or the structure which you can use for the essay. At the same time, remember that the most important thing is the core 75 questions, right? The ZAT percentile comes from there. GK and SA, these do not influence the percentile. And when it comes to even XLRI, which actually is getting these answers, right? How many GK questions you got right or wrong? What is your essay? Even there, there's no separate scoring for these. It's something which is obviously going to influence your PI marks. So what could happen, for example, is, you know, if your GK score is on the lower side, they could ask you a few more general awareness or current affairs question so it could influence that but you don't have any uh, you know whether it is in the shortlisting or in the selection there's no separate marks which are there for the GK and SA and if you come to this bit where we've listed some of the most important B schools which consider your ZAT score other than the Xavier's ones no one's going to actually get your GK and SA score and in fact I don't think even XIMB or XIME and all are looking at it so your ZAT percentile is what's most important I'll put a link to the essay video out here so in the description so that you can watch that as well after this. Well, let's look a little bit at the pattern changes which we were discussing. So 105 questions, that's not changed. Five options, one correct option, all MCQs, that's again something which is there. The time is what has changed. The number of questions, as you can see, remains the same as last year. Uh, so, you know, if you've taken mocks, then that's something which is sufficient. You're getting 10 extra minutes and I'll tell you how you could use this. Keyboard testing, probably this is just to ensure that everybody's keyboard is working fine and you're able to type out the essay. So there's five minutes, you can almost look at it all as a break of sorts. And then there's the part three, which is 30 minutes for GK and the essay. 
I definitely recommend that you know you take 10 or a max of 15 minutes for the GK questions. It's binary, right? Either we know it or we don't know it. If you're torn between two options, just go with whichever one. And if you don't know the question, like I said, just mark, you know, maybe all B's or all A's or C's or whichever option you fancy, but stick with one. Don't do A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D. Just pick one so that whichever ones are correct, lucky guesses, you just get them. The remaining 15 to 20 minutes spend on your essay. I'm not going too much in detail on this because we already have the video about it. So now let's look at some key things or key uh, differentiators, right? What is it that makes that a little unique? So no sectional timer. Now, unlike CAT, there is no sectional timer. So what this means is you can start with, you know, whatever is your strong point. You could give more time to your weaker area so that you're maximizing the questions. Go in with a test strategy based on your own strengths and your weak areas. The second thing, of course, decision making. So let's get that out of the way. That's something which is not there in any other exam. To some extent, maybe, you know, in exams like NMAT and SNAP, we have a few questions. But, uh, you know, the questions which are there in ZAT are obviously more difficult and we have more of them as well. There are 21 questions. Now, a lot of students I've seen tend to be a little scared of this. They are not sure what to choose or they might end up spending a lot of time, especially if they are torn between a couple of options. Uh, these days, we have a lot of questions where we need to, you know, choose the right options, you know, in the descending order of effectiveness or out of, you know, five given courses of action, you might have to choose three, which makes sense. So I've seen sometimes that students spend more more time on these. Uh, what I would recommend is this is a section which you know you can actually score well provided you've put in some you know amount of prep. Uh, look at the question itself. There will be keywords in the question which will guide you on what the right option or you know the right set of options would be. The other thing, of course, this is quite a long exam, right? Three and a half hours, uh, even if we look at it, you know, just three hours for the 75 questions, two hours and 55 minutes. So you need to pace yourself. Uh, it is very difficult to be completely focused for almost three hours, three and a half hours at a stretch, uh, especially as we go in, right? We are going in and, you know, we're not starting the exam then and there. There's that initial idle time and then the exam starts. Uh, sometimes also if the exam seems a little tougher, that is generally known to be tougher than CAD, the, you know, the verbal is a little difficult, DM is unique, so all of these things are there, we have five options, you have to, you know, solve all of the questions or you can leave a max of eight questions unattempted, so there's a lot of these things which sometimes freak out students, so hopefully you've taken mocks and, you know, you already know your strategy, but it's also important to pace yourself. Since we have so much time, let's say you start with, uh, you know, the DM section, it's quite okay to take a minute or two as a break before you go into the next section. Now, obviously, don't make it like a five or 10 minute thing, but 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes is going to be fine. And, you know, you could get refreshed if possible. You could just, you know, drink a bit of water or something like that. You can also check out how many questions you've attempted, uh, use the question paper view to just look at the format. So things like these. Just make sure that you are focused throughout the paper. Short one minute breaks are definitely things which will help you. The other thing is, because we are getting this much time, we have to optimize the use. Now, when we look at CAT, for example, or SNAP, which is probably the best example for this, we have limited time. Here, time is not exactly an issue because, you know, we have so much time in that. So you should go in with a plan. And I'm going to just in about a minute tell you what is the plan that you could go for. And by plan, I mean how much time you're taking for which section, what is the section that you start with and so on. The last thing, of course, which makes that unique is our scoring pattern, right? Uh, because we have a minus 0.1 for any, you know, more than eight questions unattempted. So ninth question onwards, which is unattempted, you're starting to get minus 0.1 for each question. That means that you should maximize your attempts, right? So try to solve, if possible, all the questions or at max leave up to eight questions unattempted. There's no real reason to get the minus 0.1. If you've been prepping for CAT and for that also, your concept should be clear. So you should be able to attempt all the questions or, you know, most of the questions. Definitely one section which you should fully attempt is the decision making questions. Few questions might be wrong. That's how it is. See, in that, it's very difficult to figure out which of our answers are right and which are wrong. We have five options. Some of them are tricky. Even in verbal, again, the same thing. We have so many inferential questions in the RCs and, you know, what I call the inference or the critical reasoning questions. So, they will be tricky but if even if you're torn between a couple of options go with what you feel is the right answer look at the 
passage in DM, look at the questions, try to definitely solve all the DM questions, right? Even if you're not fully sure of an option, just go with what you feel is, you know, the more ethical choice, the choice which maybe, you know, makes the best use of resources or which sets the right precedent, right? So maybe in quant or in verbal, depending on, you know, which is your weak area, you might look to leave a few questions or maybe even, you know, three or four in both sections, but DM you definitely should solve. So now let's come to the strategy. Now I'm going to give you a couple of strategies. You can pick and choose the one which works well for you based on your strengths. So if you're strong in VARC, what I would recommend you do is start with decision making. Take a max of 40 minutes. If you're strong in VARC, you're probably fast at reading. So you might actually be able to crunch it to 30 or 35 minutes. But definitely get to the end of the DM section by this. You should have solved all the questions in these 40 minutes. DM, I usually don't recommend that you, you know, you mark some questions for review and look at it at the end. But uh, if you are not confident or you're really torn between a couple of options, you could do that. But if possible, just try to solve it then and there. Uh, only in case if you're feeling exhausted, maybe you're done with about 16, 17 questions and the right ones are just not occurring to you. Certain questions you could mark for review and come back to it just for a fresh look at the end. Uh, usually, you know, changing the option we've selected tends to not work out well. So just be careful of this. Try to finish the paper. The second thing which I would recommend is your strong section, which is VARC. Uh, now here, of course, what I'm doing is I'm giving you two sections back to back, which are reading oriented. So decision making also, you know, we are reading a few sentences, maybe a paragraph or even a couple of paragraphs. And VARC again, of course, we have a lot of reading. So this is where taking a strategic one minute break might be helpful. You could even choose to quickly solve a couple of quant questions and come back. You can just put your head down and rest. This seems slightly controversial, but that's totally fine. It's a long paper. You can have a drink of water. Maybe just take, you know, a few minutes to use the question paper view and look at all the verbal questions. You could also look to start with the VA questions, right? So that's what I do. I find that, you know, once I'm done with DM, uh, even if the first question is an RC or is an inferential question, what I'll do is I'll try to find the couple of grammar questions the fill in the blanks questions and all of these these are usually quick solving you can finish it in you know 30 to 40 seconds or maybe max of a minute and solving a few questions quickly will actually give you a boost and then you have the momentum so try something of this sort but in those 45 minutes try to finish most of the questions if not all be disciplined even if you've not finished all the VARC questions, we can come back to it. Try to take about 45 minutes or, you know, let's say around the 45 minute mark, keep tracking the time. Uh, whichever is the last question you're solving or if it's an RC, just try to quickly wrap it up and then move to quant. Take about 45 minutes for quant. Uh, given that, you know, you're strong in VARC, I'm assuming that quant, there could be certain questions which you're not able to solve or either, you know, you are solving, but you know that solving this question is going to take you longer. So what I would recommend here for quant is, Solve all of the questions which you feel you can quickly solve. Now, quick is going to be dependent on you, right? So, Vignesh, for example, might be able to solve all the questions in 30 to 45 seconds. I will definitely take up about a minute or maybe, you know, even a little more. So, it can be 30 seconds, 60 seconds, for even, you know, one and a half minutes. It doesn't matter. But get to the end of the quant and DI section. Make sure that you've read every question. Only solve the questions where you are clear with the approach, you know that, you know, you can solve it. And it's also something which you can quickly solve. If there's a very calculation intensive, you know, DI set, for example, or a question where there's a lot of calculation to be done, given that, you know, there's no calculator, that is something which you should mark for review. So at the end, out of 28 questions, solve as many as you can quickly solve. It can even be, you know, 10 or 15 questions with a shorter time. That's all right. And just mark for review the questions you know you can come back to and, you know, maybe you think a little bit and the approach will strike you or you already know how to solve it, but it's calculation intensive. So don't solve these in your first pass. Now, once quant is done, again, take a short strategic break of maybe, you know, half a minute or one minute and then go back to the VARC section. If there's anything that you've not attempted, maybe, you know, a couple of tough RCs were there which you left it or some questions you just wanted to, you know, just double check. Uh, maybe the poem was difficult, whatever it is, just take about 15 odd minutes and solve these questions. It's important to come back to VARC first rather than, you know, spending all our time on quant because if that is your strong suit, that is where you're more likely to get questions correct. So spend about 15 minutes, of course, play with these numbers. If you've taken only 30 minutes for your first quant pass, you can spend a little longer in verbal and then go back to quant, right? 
on the other hand if you manage to finish everything in 45 minutes or you just have you know maybe just one rc left you would probably solve it in 5 minutes and then that gives you more time for quant but once your varc mark for review questions are done and you know you finished all or you know most of the varc section then whatever quant questions you had marked for review you can come back to it you have 30 minutes which should be more than enough time to finish all or definitely most for it so if varc is your strength something like this will work uh, you can probably try to take a test today maybe a past paper or just a mock and see if this approach works for you so that you can go in confidently on sunday on the other hand if you're strong in quant there are slight tweaks which i would recommend so i've given you a little bit extra time for dm here because in case you need a little more time just from the reading perspective you can do that but definitely try to finish the dm section in 45 minutes don't mark dm questions for review just try to finish it only if you are very torn between a couple of options should you mark it for review and come back to it towards the end or maybe after the first pass is done now after dm you should look to solve quant if you ask me i do feel that this is the optimal strategy even for sometimes people who are strong in verbal because you're going from a heavy reading section which is dm to quant and then to varc so this would definitely act as a refresher so in 40 to 45 minutes you're done with all the dm questions then you immediately come to quant maybe take a 30 second break if you need to and look at quant and solve all of the questions which you can solve in about a minute right so it can be plus minus 30 seconds of course but whatever are the ones which you are able to quickly solve so this could be questions where the approach is immediately occurring and questions which you can quickly calculate and solve any question could be maybe a di set or something where you know there's a lot of calculation required market for review any question where the approach is immediately not striking you or you've tried for maybe about 30 seconds or even one minute but you're not figuring not able to figure out how to solve it these are all the questions which you mark for review now once this is done then come to the VA section. Spend about 35 minutes. What I would recommend here is only solve VA. By VA, I mean all of the non-RC questions. So this is including the single paragraph inference or the critical reasoning questions. The other question should take you less time, about 30 minutes, seconds to maybe 60 seconds. The inference questions, of course, since it's a paragraph, will take a little longer. But try to solve everything except for the RCs. And since you will have the RCs in between, just you know skim through the first paragraph and the RCs which you feel are easier, just make sure to mark for review those question numbers, right? So that those are the RCs. So out of all of the RCs, if you're finding a couple of them to be easy and a couple of them are abstract RCs, so you, you feel that you know that's not your forte, just mark for review the questions in the easier RC. So once you're done with quant, you can immediately come back. So now that VA is done. What you can do is you can go back to quant. That's your strength. So it more, makes more sense to finish all of the questions in quant. So take about another 30 minutes. Try to solve all the questions in quant, prioritizing the ones you've marked for review. So what I mean by this is, let's say, you know, in the first five questions, you've already solved question one and two. Out of three, four and five, three, you're not sure how to solve. You just don't know the concept or, you know, you need to think a lot. But four and five, you know, you can solve it. So you've already marked them for review. So solve all of the marked for review questions first. Once you're done with all of the quant questions, if you're still left with time, come back to the unattempted questions, right? The ones which will show up as in red color in your question paper palette. Once this is done, then you can go back and you have about 30 minutes left, which you can use to solve the RCs. Again, here start with the RCs, which are easier for you, but definitely read the tougher ones also. If there are any direct questions or any questions that you feel you can solve, you can try to prioritize it. So given the amount of time we have, you can actually look to finish the paper. So if you're strong in quant, this strategy will probably work for you. You can try to solve a mock today or maybe even a past paper and just see if this is working. Play around with the time, of course, whether, you know, you're going for the VARC one or the quant one. Just play around with the time. The 45 minutes can become 35, 35 can become 45. So things like that. Uh, also be flexible. Uh, depending on whichever section is comparatively easier or tougher, you can, of course, tweak the strategy. So if you find that, you know, verbal, even if, you know, it's a little bit your weaker section, you're still able to solve because it has become easier as compared to the last couple of years the 35 minutes for verbal could become you know maybe 30 if you're able to quickly solve it or even 45 if you feel that no i can just go for it and attempt everything so be flexible depending on what will come up so that's it for the strategy i leave you with the three key main points which i said so first is definitely formulate your test strategy keep the total time of 175 minutes in mind and look at your own strengths and weaknesses 
Remember that you got to maximize your attempts. Try to attempt everything if possible. Definitely don't leave more than eight questions unattempted. And DM is the part which you need to solve strategically. Look at the questions. Use that to help you identify the options because you know whatever is uh, the requirement or whatever are the factors that you need, whatever are your priorities, those will be given to you in the question. Of course, be ethical, try to optimize, you know, make the best use of resources, uh, look at what sort of precedent you are setting. So you shouldn't do something which is going to make it difficult for your team or your company or yourself going forward, right? So you shouldn't also be super charitable if it's a, you know, like a question about a corporate or something, you have to be realistic. So solve it strategically. This definitely is something which you can quickly do and DM can be like a make or break or a high scoring section. So that's it for this video. Wish you all the best for ZAD from everyone here in Mockcat. Uh, please do check out the video on essay writing. Uh, there'll be some useful pointers for you there. And if you like this video, I'd be really great for us if you like it. Definitely subscribe because we're going to put up a lot of content. All the best.